These days, many artists will create high-quality inkjet prints of their original work by way of a high-resolution electronic scan. Recently, the artist John Eden decided to scan one of his stainless steel sculptures called Larry's Bell. The process electronically maps the object to be reproduced by way of a 3D printer. I offered to document the process on video, and here's how it went. Yeah, my name's Steve Ferentinos from Geoform, and we're going to see uh, a laser scan of this art piece using uh, Polyworks software and a Ferro Arm laser scanner. So this is faux self-portrait, a piece that I had made using CT scans that I had had done going through my cancer treatment. We use the scans to create a STL image and from that we made a prototype and from there we made a casting mold so that I could make numerous copies in various materials. Is It's a non-contact laser scan and what's happening is we're gathering right now thousands of points on the surface of this part. Our object on this part was to uh, build a clean STL file that can be used for, for further prototyping and manipulation, whatever, uh, whatever John wants to do later. So I'm getting some higher density points here in the teeth just because there's more detail. So that was 70, almost a little over 71,000 points in that last scan we took. This is a, a set of points, mm -hmm. <clears throat> raw points, and from here normally you would go to a set of closed polygons, usually triangles. Um, and a lot of prototyping systems use that format. It can be exported as an STL file. What's the weight of that piece, John? Um, it's heavy. I'm not sure. <laughs> but you can still lift it. Yeah, it's liftable. So, but it's, hold, uh, hold on. Let's set it on a rag over here. Oh, it's already I'm on. Just going to take. It. Okay. You want that little tiny lip under there? Yeah. As part of the model? Yes. You want to build it. See, I want it to float off the surface. So it needs to be smaller than it. No, I, well, I, we can do it. It's OK. Yeah. I have, in fact, w the way you have it now is perfect. Now, I was saying one of the advantages of this system is you can you have a hard probe and a laser. And they are referenced to each other. So I can build a coordinate system with features measured with the hard probe and those will be <coughs> registered to the laser scan later. So on this piece here, what I want to do is I want to build a plane under here, flat plane, just with the hard probe. Now, we have to spray this part because the laser doesn't like anything shiny. cross-section plane cutting through our data. And now I can create a cross-section. Ah, okay. You know what? I'm going to grab some more points.
The reason is that cross section, I told it to look for points within 30 thousandths of this plane and see how it's pieced. Mm -hmm. We don't have enough data here. Oh, okay. So I'll start, I'll, I'll grab a few more points. I'll, I'll turn up the accuracy or the, the density. I started out uh, doing the bell shape because I wanted to do an homage to California and I thought uh, the California Mission is really kind of the iconic uh, image of California for for me, growing up as a kid, that's the first thing you learned in California history was the mission system. And uh, I just thought it would be interesting to do various studies on this shape and, and also how it relates to um, other cultures. In India, there's a, a stupa shape that uh, that is bell-shaped, and it's a religious uh, object. And I like the idea of tying two cultures together to have the same kind of spiritual uh, element and meaning. Um, and so that's what got me going on the bells. And I just wanted to create a, um, a shape that was Beautiful. Almost done. <clears throat> we don't really even need that. And that. And that. And that. So the job now is to revolve this around Z. The laser, probably just the noise. Let me clean this view up a little bit. Yeah, it's not too bad. But see how we're getting a little bit of radiation? Yeah, I can clean that up. The laser is accurate to about plus or minus three or four thousand. The process was that it was uh, actually turned on a lathe at a machine shop and then brought to Jack's studio and he put it onto his lathe and I hand polished it. But and that should, you can see from the physical part that there's no waviness, there's no distortion. Right. So our job right now is to clean up anything that we've picked so up. So it is the laser that most is likely creating the yeah. distortion and not the yeah. Because you know uh, polishing on a lathe is extremely accurate. Because in art there is an argument between the machine perfect and then something that's done by the artist's hand and people. You know, certain people believe that the artist hand is superior to the machine process. So it's but, possible, but that might, it, it, that's more philosophical. It is, and it depends on the machine. Right. Because once we're done with this, uh, it's going to be pretty good. And you can play with this. This weighting of the spline that we're building. So you can really split the difference. Yeah, and like I said, we're, we're working with thousandths of an inch here, but you can see it in the finished product. Right. This is almost straight here, isn't it? Yeah, that's, that's meant to be straight. like a straight section right in here. Almost straight, not perfect. 
Anyway, that's the process.